Hello friends, in the last session we have discussed about the past displacement pump where the pump will provide the constant discharge irrespective of your speed. Okay, now we will discuss about the centrifugal pump. So let us see the definition of the centrifugal pump. The centrifugal pumps are rotodynamic pumps used to transport the fluid or liquid by conversion of your rotational kinetic energy to hydrodynamic energy by action of your centrifugal force with help of impellers. Okay. So this impeller has several blades or vanes as shown in this picture. Okay, this rotation of your impeller will come or energy come from your engine or electric motor. So what does it mean of the rotor dynamic pump means the discharge is not constant. It will change. Okay, when you change the pressure, when you change the velocity, when you change the area, so the discharge is not constant. In the fast displacement pump, the discharge is constant in respect of your speed, but it will change. And this uses the kinetic energy. Okay, it uses the or convert the kinetic energy into hydrodynamic energy that is called your half mv square. The velocity you can see that velocity is converted into your pressure head that is called your h. Okay, so let us see uh, the how it will work. Centrifugal pumps come in many shapes, colors, and sizes, but they typically look something like this. The pumps consist of two main parts: the pump and the motor. The pump consists of your casing. Impeller, other parts such as your pump shaft, bearings. Okay, this bearing helps to rotate uh, rotates on your shaft, and the bearing house. Okay, to cover the all shaft, pump shaft, and bearings, and other is coupling. The motor is an electrical induction motor which allows us to convert electrical energy into mechanical energy. We can see that we have a fan and a protective. Then inside the motor, we have the stator. Listen to this: we have the rotor and shaft. Separate Coupled pumps will usually have a bearing house which, as the name suggests, houses the bearings. The shaft continues into the pump casing. As it enters the casing, it passes through a gland, packing and the stuffing box which combine to form a seal. The electrical motor comes in either three-phase or single-phase configuration depending on the application. We're going to look at three-phase as this is the most common. Inside the three-phase induction motor, we have three separated coils which will produce a rotating magnetic field. The rotor is connected to the shaft, and the shaft runs. This way, when the rotor rotates, so will the impeller. So now, by creating the rotating magnetic field within the motor, we spin the rotor, which spins the shaft, and this spins the impeller. The impeller is always immersed in water. When the impeller is made to rotate, it makes the fluid surrounding it also rotate. This imparts centrifugal force to water particles and the water moves radially out. Since rotational mechanical energy is transferred to the fluid, at discharged sides of impeller, both pressure and kinetic energy of water will rise. At suction side, water is getting displaced, so a negative pressure will be induced at I. Such low pressure helps in sucking fresh water stream into the system again and this process continues. Impeller is fitted inside a casing. So the water moving out will be collected inside it and will move in the same direction of rotation of impeller to the discharge nozzle. Here you can note one specialty of casing. It has got increasing area along the flow direction. Such increasing area will help in accommodating newly added water stream and will also help in reducing exit flow velocity. Reduction in flow velocity will result in increase in static pressure, which is required to overcome resistance of pumping system. If you summarize, the principle is that the rise of pressure head is directly proportional to tangent velocity. Okay, this is the most important question that we will ask. So, what what exactly it means? Mean so the, when the if you see the diagram, this is the impeller. Okay, this is the casing as shown in the video. When the area of this casing is gradually increases toward the outlet. So here and there is no other outlet sections in this casing. From the continuity equation, Q equals to area into velocity. So we know the area is inversely proportional to velocity. When area is increases velocities reduces so here the velocity that is nothing but your kinetic energy okay can i write this uh, velocity kinetic energy 
so due to the impeller it will higher always the energy will increases toward this casing toward the casing okay due to the centrifugal action this impeller again okay, this casing is no outlet so the water will moves in the open area only okay so that this area is also increasing toward the outlet section from the bernoulli equation we know that pressure energy kinetic energy and elevation energy is constant if you neglect this the remaining two energies are your potential energy and kinetic energy okay that is constant so when the kinetic energy okay that is velocity reduces automatically the pressure head or pressure energy increases so that is okay so this is uses the forced vortex and free vortex concept what is the meaning of the forced vortex when the impeller is rotates okay due to your prime mover okay external torque is gain okay so that impeller rotates automatically the liquid which falls on your impeller also be rotates so it will gain some energy that's called your velocity so that is result the rise in pressure head of your rotating liquid that is called your forced vortex okay when the when impeller hit the water to your uh, casing toward the casing okay so the whatever the possessed rotation energy is gained in due to impeller okay that will due to that effect only the liquid will move outside okay that is see here when the fluid comes out from your rotating impeller at that time the fluid has already vortex okay, due to the rotation of your impeller okay that inertia of the fluid so no external torque is required to move this liquid out okay so do okay the here absence the torque external torque is absent so in this condition the whatever the energy possessed before only due to your forced vortex so due to that only the liquid is coming out that is called your free vortex so where there is no external torque is required so due to the already available velocity or rotation the liquid is coming outside that is called a free vortex so from the free vortex we can say that in the small radius if radius is less the velocity is higher so in this condition periphery speed is inversely proportional to radius okay this also we can define in this way also or forced vortex when the radius okay when the radius is small okay or the radius is increases okay the velocity also increases like this okay that means the radius is directly proportional to your speed so let us see the which type of questions may be asked in the examination so with this background we can understand the flow in centrifugal pump is radially outward direction so the discharge also be gradually uh, outward direction only that is your discharge is always in radial direction radial mean in a curved path radial mean not straight it will always moves in the curved path that is your like this now the centrifugal pump works on the principle of forced vortex okay the water enter at the center of the impeller or that is your i we call i so water will not enter in sides bottom or top so that is the center of the impeller the motion of water in centrifugal pump is from the center to outward center to outward or periphery so that's we have already learned the suppose here the water is comes from the center and this water moves a pressure will act in this outward direction outward direction to the periphery of this impeller okay periphery of the impeller so water is leaving from impeller toward the casing that is called your free vortex but water is in the impeller is forced vortex okay these pumps okay in this pump the blades are angle also be sometimes asked the backward curve vanes have angle is lesser than the 90 degrees please remember and these backward curve vanes or blades have higher efficiency so that we will use this backward vein curves these are the forward vein curves okay so if see so this is the difference between the forward and backward that is the these are like this okay these blades are like this but these are like in this direction okay these are the back side and this is forward side okay so this is the state we call the radial okay so now these angles are for backward it is the lesser than 90 degrees for the forward it's uh, more than 90 degrees and radial is equal to 90 degrees and one more most important question they may ask that is the practical suction limit of a centrifugal pump so this is a centrifugal pump or impeller okay backward impellers this is your discharge head okay and this is your 
सक्शन हेड ओके विल डिस्कस इन अपकमिंग सेशन वॉट इज द प्रैक्टिकल लिमिट ऑफ युअर सक्शन सो दिस इज द प्रेशर एट दिस वाटर सोर्स इज इक्वल टू एटमोस्फिक प्रेशर ओके सो दिस इज द प्रैक्टिकल लिमिट इज अप टू सिक्स टू सेवन मीटर्स ओनली ओके बट यू नो द वन एटमोस्फिक प्रेशर इज इक्वल टू टेन पॉइंट थ्री मीटर ऑफ वाटर कॉलम सो दैट इज युअर थ्रिटिकल सक्शन लिमिट और so that is equal to atmospheric pressure so why it is the practical suction lift is lesser or up to only 6 or 7 why because the pump energy is losses due to friction due to strainer due to pipe or some may vacuum is not created properly uh, cavitation also be takes place we will discuss upcoming session what is this what are the losses the turbine will act or work opposite to your centrifugal pump so that is the flow in centrifugal pump is radially outward but in turbine that is a radially inward flow that is different between your centrifugal pump and turbine pump okay now let us see the which type of question asked in examination these are the some questions asked in examination please go through once the flow in volute casing outside the rotating impeller the flow outside of the impeller that is your free vortex the centrifugal pump has maximum efficiency when the blades are so maximum efficiency for always backward the centrifugal pump fluid enters from only center not from the side or top or anything but the blades are the blades are impeller always the backward facing okay and centrifugal pump has flow is radially outward direction the 